that's kind of the weirdness of this market. It's completely disconnected. It's the haves versus the have nots. It's the upstarts versus. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody had a great week. Really, really odd week. We'll get to that uh, in a second. Um, first of all, we got three weeks left in the year. Um, you know, what looked bleak about a week ago, week and a half ago, that this whole uh, notion of a Santa Claus rally kind of died out really got saved very, very aggressively this week, uh, but with an asterisk involved. Um, indexes had an incredibly strong week. Uh, highest uh, percentage moves, 4% uh, pretty much all across the board on all the major uh, moving averages. This is the biggest move uh, this week uh, since the first quarter, right? Since the first quarter of 2021. Um, and if you look at the data, and just to show you how bullish the market was, the CPI reading that came out on Friday was the highest reading in four decades, 40 years. Uh, usually this would be uh, a negative, a complete negative for stocks, but since the market has been so strong, and this is kind of what we talk about all the time, it's not the news that's most important is how the market embraces the news. And what should have been a sell-off on that reading was a pretty big rally uh, towards uh, the end with a lot of names that are putting in strong financial balance sheets, and we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Um, really leading the way. And that was a very, very important part. And that's kind of the, the, the mainstay where we keep on reiterating over and over again on all these updates. Again, you, there's 30,000, uh, 300,000 blogs, financial blogs that will tell you exactly what the market did, what Wall Street uh, reacted to. But it, as traders, what we try to do is reaction to the reaction of news and which way the wind is going to flow. So when the market started selling off uh, the day before Thanksgiving, after Thanksgiving, on the whole Omicron situation, my first thought was, well, let's see how this plays out, right? Let's see how the market uh, gets used to this data. Let's see how this market reacts to further headlines. And the market really embraced it very, very quickly and moved higher. And that's exactly what happened uh, with this core uh, CPI news uh, came out on Friday. But the oddest part about this week, you would have thought what a 4% rise in the NASDAQ, you would think everything was flying into its all-time highs. Because again, the scoreboard says the market is outperforming individual stocks. And if you look at the names that had the biggest run-ups of this year, like really aggressive growth stories, uh, or even you know leaders, right? They got sold, and that's the most oddest part about it. With a 4% rise in the NASDAQ 100, names like UPST that had a phenomenal, phenomenal run over the past year, looks like they're in their own bear market. A name like Unity Software, again, same case scenario, had this big, big run this year, it looks like they're in a bear market. But not only those, you have the traditional high beta names, for the exception of two, and we'll get to that in a second, they're all being sold. Amazon is acting like they have, you know, the, like they have a plague, like they, they gave everybody the, the coronavirus, coronavirus. Look at Square, Square is in its own bear market. Netflix, again, can't get out of its own way. Zoom can't get out of its own way. Roku had this really, really big move, got a big upgrade, uh, had the whole legality thing headline with YouTube. Okay, you had this one big move and they sold it off for the next two days. Again, this picture here, the story here is not sold. It's not yet written because, again, this thing could literally bounce back, trap on the five-day moving average, and go back higher. But now at least we have a two-sided play on Roku going into next year, uh, going into next week. Uh, names like Facebook as well, right? Facebook, uh, we talked about Zoom. Uh, names like Boeing. And so the wildest part about it is if you really break down what happened in technology and you say to yourself what what all these stocks that are looking crappy right i, th I think it's a nice way of saying it. well how could the nasdaq be up four percent and then you turn to this cash cows right apple is parabolic right now it's, it's really really starting to go parabolic this is the one that can go 
which I really, really like going into this week. You know, if you look at the two names, the two biggest, strongest, arguably top two out of top five strongest technical companies in the world, they're both thriving. And the reason why they're both thriving is the money's coming out of growth, the potential plays, right? Like drafting Kobe Bryant out of high school. Maybe he'll be great one day. Maybe he won't. So the money's coming out of all these stocks that had great, great runs, and they're putting him back into cash cows, Microsoft. Apple, right? These are the biggest names. And, I, and, and the way the market's going, if we continue to have a thriving uh, market, right? Bullish sentiment going into this week. You got, I mean, you have to assume my, Microsoft challenges uh, its all-time highs. We started seeing ridiculous option flow coming in the name. Uh, that's exactly what you need. Short-term expiration, uh, big out-of-the-money calls. And that's exactly what we had in Apple, right, before it had that really, really majestic run. And now that's where we're getting into Microsoft. And the oddest part about, for example, Friday session, the majority of value, if you're trading the tech space in a weird way, has been has been to the downside, right? And we'll get to the individual pivots in a second. So kind of going into this week, you got to be bullish, right? You got to be bullish. But in an odd way, you got to be super sell-sided on the names that had the big growth runs, they were paying for the potential, they stopped paying for the potential, and here we are. So this is a, a unique market. It was very, very odd last week. Um, you know, one day the market looked great, right? The market looked great. We were looking for a follow through, they sell the market off. The next day we're looking for a downside action. Downside action comes and then they rally the market into the close. So you had a very bipolar type of scenario. A lot of stocks got disconnected, usually, when you are trading tech, everything goes in, in, in tandem, right? Usually if Apple is strong, that means Facebook, Netflix, Tesla, Amazon, uh, everything in between is strong as well. But they, oh, they got disconnected. It was the have, the have nots, the ones who've been collecting and hoarding cash for years and years and years, the Microsoft and the Apples of the world, very, very strong versus the names like the UPST, the upstarts, no pun intended, but the upstarts, the Unity softwares, the Coinbase, right? These are stocks all in big downtrends right now. Uh, and the most important part is we have to see uh, if that trend uh, does continue going into uh, going into this week. And I, and I think it can just because uh, you're seeing a lot of really good setups both to the upside and you're seeing a lot of you know, really, really good setups uh, to the downside. So it was a very, very odd week last week, strong numbers being put on the scoreboard, but huge disconnect. And that's what we have to kind of keep an eye on uh, for next week. So going into this week, I am bullish, but there's a lot of sell buy-ins that I do like. So let's talk about some names that I really like going into this week. Uh, Microsoft, right? Looks great. Came out of this really aggressive channel. If you guys remember the prior day, and this is where we talk about there's no defense for a reload seller in the crowd. The other day, Microsoft took out this 36 area needed to build. A seller came in, came in very, very aggressively, came in, came in, just wasn't letting it go. Uh, I took the trade, lost a dollar in it. Uh, and then the next day, which was Friday, just went, they cleaned up that seller and just went absolutely bonkers. So kind of a, a little bit of a, a note, we, and we talk about this in a lot in different workshops and webinars and, and Q and A's. Anytime guys, when you're watching the level two, and it's a big level, right? It's a big macro level. And you see thousands and thousands of hundreds of thousands of shares being trading on that important level and the stock doesn't move. That's your first clue. There's a reload seller in the crowd. And the one prop, well, you have two choices. Number one, let it play out, right? Let it play out. Uh, but the problem with that is that person might have 5 million shares for sale and eventually buyers give up and you can lose two, three, four, five dollars in the trade. Or you could sit there and just literally wait till he gives up, uh, wait till they start cleaning him up. But that could take several days, if not several weeks. So it's a very, very uh, touchy subject. But for me personally, once I see any type of trouble technically that the stock can't get through that level and they're pounding the offer over and over and over again, here's a move. That's a big red flag. But this thing finally reclaimed. Uh, Thursday's highs. This is the highest close in this whole formation. And now it looks like it wants uh, all time highs. So definitely keep an eye on Microsoft. Uh, any, uh, any weakness on Monday, uh, trap into rising 60 minute support, red to green, uh, or through uh, Friday's channels looks really, really good. And here's the flip side, right? Here's the flip side. Look in the video, right? 
Again, here's another perfect example of a stock that had this massive, massive run, and now two days in a row uh, underneath the 20-day moving average. And here's a flip side on the other side, right? Uh, here was a short on NVIDIA from Friday, and there was a massive buyer there, right? Uh, a massive buyer there uh, and just wouldn't let go of the stock for the first an hour and a half, two hours, would not let it go. And here is another scenario that you have a choice. Either sit there and wait to get squeezed back out, uh, or get out of the trade. And this is, again, one of the great areas of trading for all you guys who are active, uh, you know, especially day traders, active day traders, you'll realize how important it is to read the order flow, to watch uh, to watch, uh, um, uh, watch the option flow, right? Watch the option flow versus uh, reload buyers and sellers. And if they're not correlating, if they just don't move off that level, uh, it's a pretty easy way uh, to get out of your position. And the one thing you always have to remember, guys, this is this is the stock market. Everything is liquid. It's not real estate that you're hoping for one buyer to come in. If you ever feel uncomfortable with it with a trade and just doesn't feel right technically, just because you're not seeing what you're supposed to see, just get out of the trade. You could always get back into it. But again, look in the video. They finally cleaned them up. Uh, it, you know, got hit pretty, it never rallied. Um, I like this thing lower. You know, I think if it starts taking down uh, Friday's channel on this week, I think you can see uh, lower prices uh, there as well. Uh, Qualcomm setting up once again, it's one of the names that held up a very, very strong, uh, you know, beautiful, just a beautiful, beautiful distribution here. If the market continues higher, uh, watch out for this thing to uh, attack the top channel. And a name like TTD is very, very interesting because look how tight this channel is getting, right? You have the bottom channel right here. You have the top of the channel here. Something has to give. So I really like TTD literally on both sides. They're either going to attack the top of the range here or attack the bottom of the range here and get pulled down uh, with every single uh, every single growth story, if that is the continued theme. And one name that's not sexy, but broke out on Friday, and you know, what broke out on Friday uh, continues to look really, really good. A name like uh, Colgate Palmolive, right? Not sexy. It's not going to make the Wall Street bets, um, you know, radar, but this is a name came out of this channel here, very slow mover, obviously not a day trade, but if this thing starts confirming, uh, can go high as well. And I do like snow. I do like snow as well. Uh, snow uh, had a big, big move, and now it's consolidating this little flag. If the market continues to be good and this thing starts confirming this whole channel, who knows, maybe you get a move back uh, into the 400 area. So I think going into this week, you have to be a little flexible. Uh, you have to be open-minded to kind of trade on both sides. Uh, stick to the the ones that are very, very strong, especially the Microsofts of the world that, again, if it does what I think is going to do, it might pull uh, an Apple type uh, move over the next uh, couple of weeks. So let's talk about uh, Friday's uh, Friday's pivots. And you'll notice uh, you'll notice the majority of them were to the downside. And this is, again, a perfect example how growth, uh, how growth and versus companies that have really, really hordes of cash uh, did this week. So um, NVIDIA 304, if it builds below, can flush. We talked about NVIDIA. Uh, I took out the 304. It took them two hours to clean up that uh, that buyer uh, in the th 303s, but it finally gave it up, put in a low of like 298 and change. If this thing confirms, I think it goes lower. Um, GameStop, not a big move. Uh, went down from 51 to 48 and then had the pretty big reversal. Uh, Netflix, again, another, you know, you'd never know the, the, the NASDAQ was strong. Netflix, 610, if it builds below, uh, can flush. Here was Netflix, right? It took out the 610, went down to uh, 605 before rallying back a little bit. Um, CVS, again, not a sexy name, right? But 9670s for experienced traders for a bounce or that 98 confirmation, it's, it's CVS, not sexy, but... You know, it has a lot of catalysts. You have uh, you have the you know flu shots, you have COVID shots, you have you know booster shots, and yada yada yada. Stock took out uh, the previous channel, uh, and now it's waiting for that hundred dollar uh, push. Nice move there on CVS. Uh, you got Overstock that got killed. Seventy seven for builds below can flush. Here was uh, Overstock. Okay, here was Overstock. Took out the seventy three. Went down. Uh, excuse me. Took out the seventy seven. Went all the way down to seventy one. Uh, nice move there as well. Uh, Oracle off the open, 98.50 flush, which happened both sides and a bounce for experienced traders for that 102 uh, confirmation. Here was Oracle, right? Here was Oracle, went as high as uh, 106 and change. 
Uh, yeah, crowd uh, 199 for Bills Blow only went down a couple of bucks. Uh, Microsoft here was the big one on the upside. 337 needs to build, and Microsoft closed pretty much at the highs. Uh, yeah, within four, th 30 cents off the highs, about 343. I think this thing goes higher. Monster, monster move. Uh, in Microsoft, uh, overstock take on the way down. Microsoft, here comes the 340s, 345s. Overstock, 148 on deck. GameStop, 148 on deck. NVIDIA, 299, 60s, next support. So you can see there's a lot of value uh, to the downside. Obviously, some pretty good moves to the upside as well, but that's kind of the weirdness of this market. It's completely disconnected. It's the haves versus the have-nots. It's the upstarts versus the companies have been established a long, long time ago. Will that trend continue this week? Yeah, maybe, maybe. And names like Tesla, you know, still needs some work. You know, it did reclaim the 50-day moving average. You know, I'll watch it. Uh, we had a really nice pivot on Tesla on Friday from that uh, 1,002 and then confirmation 996 went all the way down to the 880s. But the point is, it's not here, not there. It did reclaim the 50-day moving average. And the last time it reclaimed the 50-day moving average, it went on a big, big two-day run into the 10-day. So I am bull biased on Tesla, but we have to see exactly how it trades uh, early to formulate a better opinion once the daily, excuse me, once the 60-minute channels uh, start the firm. But based on what I've seen here last time when it confirmed the 50-day, I mean, we could get a two-day run back to the 10. So we'll see. We'll see. So guys, have a great weekend, everybody. God bless. Go live your life. Go smile. It's the holiday season. Don't take things too seriously. It's just all about the quality of life, and that's all we're trying to uh, attain. Guys, have a great day. Have a great weekend. God bless, and I'll see you all on Monday.